Here we'll now discuss prime numbers and some of their properties. So first, what is a prime number? We say any integer greater than one is prime if it is only divisible by one in itself. All other numbers are called composite. And one is actually neither, so we only start considering prime numbers at two. And then any integer greater than that would also work. Let's think of the first 10 primes. Well, two, three, five, seven, and 11 are pretty well known. After that, we have 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. If we wanted to, we could keep going. And there's actually infinitely many prime numbers. And we have been able to prove this mathematically. But essentially, we do have an infinite number of primes. There is never a last prime, so you can always keep going. We'll now define the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every number can be written as a prime or as the product of primes. And this is known as the prime factorization of the number. Let's consider the number 100. And we want to find the prime factorization. One way to do this is using a factor tree. Essentially, we need to think of any two numbers that multiply to be 100. And essentially, any two numbers that multiply will work. I'm going to do 4 and 25. Then we keep going. What multiplies to be 4? That's 2 times 2. What multiplies to be 25? Well, 5 times 5. And now all of my numbers are prime, so the prime factorization, 2 squared times 5 squared. Next, let's consider the number 643. And we want to think what numbers multiply to be 643. Well, you can check and continue checking all you want, but there's only two things. 1 and 643. This is a prime number. So its prime factorization is just 643. Next, let's consider the number 999. We can think of any two numbers that multiply to be this. One of the obvious ones may be 9 and 111. 9 is 3 times 3, and 111 is actually 3 times 37. And you can check, but 37 is prime. So we have this is 3 cubed times 37. Next, let's consider 1024. And this one may not be immediately obvious what two numbers multiply. However, we know that two goes into it. And this is two times five, 12. Well, two is prime, but five, 12, well, two can also go into that 256 times. 256 is then two times 128. 128 is 2 times 64, 64 is 2 times 32, and we can keep going, but essentially we get that this is 2 to the 10th power. If we're trying to check whether or not a number is prime, we actually have a very helpful theorem that says if our number is composite, it has a prime divisor less than or equal to the square root of that number. Therefore, we can stop after a finite amount of time, depending on what the square root is. Let's suppose we want to show 101 is prime. Well, we only need to check numbers less than or equal to the square root of 101, which we may not know exactly, but we know it's 10 point something. So we only need to check prime numbers up to 10. These would be 2, 3, 5, and 7. 
All other prime numbers are bigger than 10. Therefore, these are the only ones we need to check, and we can easily see that all of these do not go into 101, therefore it must be prime.